Hi there, Tom Mary with Workman's Dashboard here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you some of the more advanced features in the company setup in the admin panel. Uh, and again, just uh, this is how you navigate there in the top right corner. If you click the drop down and click admin panel, that's how I got here. Uh, in a prior tutorial, I showed you some of the, the basic features and setup things that you want to do when you first uh, uh, adopt the software and want to start using it and get it uh, already for your for your users to start. So this covers uh, some more of the advanced uh, features that were not covered in that prior tutorial. So on the settings tab on the far left here, um, we have uh, some preliminary uh, items that we need to set up related to job numbers, invoice numbers, and payroll. Uh, so you'll see here the next invoice number is uh, the number that you want to start your sequence on um, when you first start your company. So you could start it at one, which it shows in here by default, or you could uh, use another number if you chose. Um, you can also come back here later if you wanted to restart your order uh, for some reason. Um, you can do that too. Uh, so essentially after your starting place, it's going to increase every subsequent invoice and every subsequent job number by one, one number. Uh, in the sequence. So if our first job is job 1000, which it says here, if we create a new job after that, it will be job 1001. Um, the next item over uh, is the grace period related to payroll. So if you're going to use the timekeeping uh, functionality in the app, which is up here, which allows your employees to enter their time and um, job cost it to specific projects, if you're, if you're using that component of the app, uh, this grace period is essentially uh, the amount of time that they have to go in and edit their hours after the conclusion of a pay period. So um, in our contracting business, our payrolls end on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. and we give them a one day grace period. So that means uh, at the conclusion of a two week pay period, they have um, 24 hours until Monday night at 11:59 at p.m. to make any changes and make sure that their time is accurate and complete. So that's what the grace period is. The pay period is uh, how frequently you run your payroll. You select that here. Uh, the rate of pay for overtime and the hours in a week. Different states have different rules with regard to this. Uh, we're in Washington State, and our rule is that any time over 40 hours in a week is calculated at 50% or 1.5 the normal rate of pay. And then the pay period start date, that is essentially the, the first day of the first pay period that you want to set up after adopting the software. Um, let me continue on to the uh, activities field up here. We covered the company info uh, bid fields and bid comments in a prior tutorial. The user management will be also handled in a separate tutorial. But let me tell you a little bit about the activities. So if we navigate to a job, let me show you where these things show up, sh show up at. Um, so we're in this job uh, called Kiwi's Kitchen. And on the right, right panel here, we have several blue buttons. The second one down is called activities and notes. And so we have the ability to create uh, several, uh, three different types of notes for ourselves, uh, accounting, estimating, and production. Those items are the types of notes that are hard coded into the system and will determine where these show up at. But what you do have control over is this ability of the job note uh, or description over here. And this is what we want to set up in our in our uh, administrative panel. As you'll see, we have these three: customer calls us, we call customer, and general note. You can also enter your own on each specific job by clicking that and typing it. But we like to populate that with um, the the sorts of defaults that that we're going to be using on a regular basis. So this is where you set that up. Uh, the lead sources was also covered in a separate tab. The account we'll get in a different tutorial. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is the tax rates. Um, so this is really handy uh, if rather than uh, having to enter specific rates 
on every job and look those up. You can have an administrative user come in here in the back end and enter different jurisdictions and what the current tax rate is. So I'll just write in a, an example of one that comes to my mind. We have Seattle in our area is 9.5% tax. Um, we can do we can do other ones here. I think in our in our company setup we have dozens or maybe even hundreds of um, tax rates for the the five or six counties that we typically work in. So the advantage of setting those defaults up in the admin panel is that your users can then go into each job and in their bid area they can just point and click to the particular jurisdiction that they want. So we can click to Seattle and as, as you'll see when I clicked Seattle it automatically put in that 9.5 percent rate. So this is a good way to automate putting in sales tax rates uh, and make sure that you also have good uh, data without uh, entry errors. So that is the tax rates area and that concludes uh, this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments please leave them in the string below and uh, until next time.